most users pretty much expect apps to store their data so they can provide more customized experiences. As such, it's no surprise iOS gives us several ways to store user data. Now, one common way of doing this, so small amounts of data, is called user defaults. It's great for simple user preferences. Now, there is no specific value attached to small amounts of data, but everything you store in user defaults gets loaded automatically when your app launches, ready for you to use. So if you store a lot in there, your app launch will get slower. So to give you an idea at least, aim to store no more than about half a megabyte, 512 kilobytes of data. Now user defaults is perfect for storing things like uh, when the user last launched the app or which news story they last read or other passively collected information, small amounts of it. Even better, SwiftUI is capable of wrapping up large parts of our user defaults usage in a new property wrapper called at app storage. It only supports a subset of functionality though, but it can be really helpful. Right, enough chat, let's look at some code. We're gonna write a view here with a button that shows a tap count. So we'll say at state, at private var, tap count is zero. And a button with a title, tap count, string interpolation, tap count. And whenever the button's pressed, we'll just add one to tap count. Now, as this is clearly a very important application, we want to save the number of taps. So when the user comes back later on in the future, they can pick up where they left off. To make that happen, we want to write the new tap count out to user defaults after it's changed. So we'll add this, user defaults, dot standard, dot set tap count, four key tap, like that. Now in just one line of code here, we can see several things in action. First up, we've got to use user defaults dot standard. This is a built-in instance of user defaults that's available and attached to our application. In more advanced apps, you can create your own versions of user defaults. For example, if you wanna have settings shared across uh, an app extension like a widget, and your main app and an iMessage extension and Siri and who knows what, have your own user defaults. But for simple applications like ours, standard is fine. There's a single set method that accepts almost any kind of data we care about, basic stuff, integers, Boolean, strings, and more can all be set here. Again, stuff aimed at user preferences. We also attach a string name to this data. In our case, it's the key tap. This key is case sensitive and it really is important. We're gonna use that same key to read data back out of user defaults again. Speaking of reading it out, rather than starting with zero, we should instead read the initial value from user defaults. So we'll say user defaults dot standard dot integer for key tap. Notice how it's exactly the same key name which ensures it reads exactly the same integer value. Now, go ahead and run the app. Uh, I'll tap that a few times. Like this, 10, 12, whatever you want to, high as you like. You can go out, come in again, it'll still be there. You can terminate the app and run it again from Xcode and it will still be there. It hasn't changed. So that's neat. We've saved that little integer in user defaults. But there are two things you can't see in that code. First, what happens if we haven't got a tap key set? Like what if we haven't pressed the button at all, what should it be? And of course, this is be the case the very first time you run the application. But as you just saw, it works fine. It had a default value of zero. Now, this is helpful for integers. Zero makes a sensible default for integers. But with Booleans, for example, it can be confusing. If you had boolean for key uh, has tapped, for example, and if it can't find a key you've asked for, you'll get back false. But is that false one you've set yourself? Or does that mean there's no value at all? You can't tell, so be careful with that. Second, it takes iOS a small amount of time to write your data to permanent storage, to actually save the change of user defaults to the device. 
they don't write updates immediately because you might try and write several back to back, it'd be quite wasteful. So instead they wait some time, then write out all the changes at once. How much time is another number we don't actually have and don't wanna know, but a couple of seconds ought to do it. As a result of this, it's possible if you try it, if you're fast, let's try it now. If you tap the button, and then quickly relaunch the app in Xcode, like killing it and relaunching it, it won't have saved. Let's find out. So I'll do this, it's 33, and reload it. And it's now 25. So we've got one of them, but missed the remaining sort of eight or so. Let's try again, 36. And it's 25 still. Yeah, no. <laughs> so be careful. Now, that is obviously happening because we're killing and relaunching the app from Xcode. I'm pressing go Xcode, pressing Command R straight away. That won't happen in real devices. They'll go to the home screen or similar, and then they won't have to worry about this. So it's not a problem. But be careful, because it does mean if you, your app dies quickly, the data might not be saved. Now I mentioned that SwiftUI provides a property wrapper called App Storage that wraps around user defaults. And in simple situations like this one, it's really helpful. What it does is let us effectively ignore user defaults entirely and just use at app storage rather than at state. So I'm gonna undo these changes all the way back to my original code here. I'll just change at state to be at app storage, tap count, and then the rest is fine. I'll press Command R again and it will work exactly as it did before. So I'll go ahead and add to my tap count. Let's go to five, for example. I'll go to the home screen, so it has time to flush the defaults. Back to Xcode, we launch the app. And it says at five, or you know, 12 or similar. It will always work just like user defaults did. Do it one last time. Brilliant. Now, It'll even work with user defaults itself. If I'd called this thing, I think we had, was it tap we had previously? Like tap, like that, I think. Um, that will read the original user defaults key. That's also allowed if you want to mix and match the two. See, it's 25 again. Um, broadly though, I prefer to make it match my property name. It's not required, it's, it's optional, it's a string. Anyway, some things I wanna point out in this code. First up, we're now using at app storage and it works just like at state. When the value of tap count changes, it will reinvoke the body property with the new data. And it will do that if the data changes, because we've modified it like here, or because user defaults modified it somewhere else. Maybe another view called user defaults.standard.set, whatever, for key tap count, that'll spot it and reload our view. We still attach a string name. I've used tap count, but again, it can be anything you want to be, but it is case sensitive. But the rest of the property is declared as normal, as if user defaults did not exist, including a default value for if there was nothing in tap count. Now clearly, using app storage is easier than using user defaults because it's one line of code rather than two, but also we don't have to repeat the key name twice. We only use it once, so we're saving the chance of mistakes happening there. However, right now at least, app storage does not make it easier to handle complex data like Swift structs, for example. Perhaps because Apple wants us to remember that storing lots of data in app storage is a bad idea.